So um, it's a pleasure to present at this uh, conference. And I'm here with uh, Brendan Matchley, who's from the uh, Synthesis Center at Arizona State University. So um, I'm Sha Xin Wei. I'm the director of the School of Arts, Media, and Engineering, and also the Synthesis Center. OK. So, um, so basically, we'd like to talk a little bit about uh, uh, yet other ways to uh, think about how to compose richly for uh, responsive environments that allow for, uh, allow for unanticipated activity, right? Playful activity or improvisatory activity, basically it. Um, we've done a lot of work over the last 18 years in different kinds of environments. And uh, it's, I like to also, of course, credit people like Gordon Pask and uh, George Lewis and Philip himself for inspiring uh, uh, work. Uh, this is an installation that we built in, in Paris in, a, in the Musée des Arts et Métiers. Uh, which uh, shows one of many ways to somehow animate a space, or not so not much animate a space, but to make a space that's more amenable to playful activity that's meaningful to the individual or collectively. Uh, in this case, this particular case, what we did was to take any activity in the middle of this rotunda. This is an 800-year-old church that's adjoining the, uh, the modern museum. Any activity that the three cameras could see and then decompose activity into bits of time. So bits of rhythm or bits of time. For example, if you are, let's say, if you look at me, if I'm wiggling my fingers like this very rapidly, but the rest of my body is moving legato fashion, then let's say we select out the rapidly moving parts, but the other parts stay behind or not shown. Or more simply, if you take a certain moment, a stream of video coming in, we take the moments of time that are a certain number of seconds in the past and leave others aside. So what the artist did, was to recompose that, these different moments of time and rhythm, into a palimpsest, which was then put back into the absides of the church, toned with the color of the light through the stained glass window. This woman you see right here, there were many people came through, you know, thousand people. She uh, was dancing one dance per day in honor of the Bataclan uh, um, um, terrorist attack, and she decided to stage her dance that day in our rotunda. So what are the desiderata, desiderata for the kinds of um, uh, uh, systems that we might want to build to allow artists and designers to make many different kinds of environments, not just one, but many, a whole range. So these are obvious ones. Uh, in our case, we've been looking always at the live situation, never telematic, never VR, but always looking at the live event where people are physically co-present at the same time. But of course, what does same time mean is a question for experimentation. Another is that we're very interested in the whole experience, not a pre-orthogonalized uh, uh, notion of first look at the video, look at the, or look at the visual, or think about the, uh, the, the, the hearing part of it, look at the haptic part of it, and put back together a Frankenstein of the whole experience. So instead, think about the whole experience first, and then think about how to make small adjustments inside the given experience. Another is this idea of technical ensemble. That is, for us, an individual, you're thinking of Simon Dong, this idea of a technical ensemble being a, 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 an ecology of different kinds of organisms. Some of them happen to be uh, made by people. Some are made by bugs. Some are made by physics. But these ensembles, and some are highly refined machines, these kind of ensembles that he wrote about in the mode of existence of a technical object in a very careful way. And finally, this idea that instead of thinking about what objects, think of the ontology. Instead of thinking about the ontology of the world or the artificial system, think first maybe in terms of transformations. Not so much how this uh, cup came to be, this, uh, how this cup, what, what kind of cups there are in the world, but think about how this cup came to be. And also not thinking in terms of um, how to categorize gestures. This is a hello, this is a goodbye, and then train some system on it, but think about how does a movement come to be regarded as a gesture? Okay. So, so some of the very important ones are at the bottom of this page, is the Zadarata, thinking, for example, for, to, to take gesture recognition or pattern recognition as a case, case in point, we typically take a gesture, we parse it. We parse the movement coming in. Or we take speech, and we parse the sound stream into some units. And then we look at, we do analysis on the units. But this very idea of framing continuum behavior or continuum experience into these chunks already uh, would color 
the notion of what is a gesture or what is a thing. All right. So up until recently, this, been, this has been the way that we work with any kind of interactive system. And we wanted to question that from, from the very get-go, from 2001. That's why the lab was called the Topological Media Lab. Another issue is that this notion of looking at tokens altogether, whatever it is, it could be uh, my hands are waving in the air, it could be a bunch of audio coming to the microphone, it could be some you know, IMU giving you six, nine DOF you know, vectors of data coming in, but this idea that, that we, can to we should tokenize it first into a, a, a symbol of some sort. Okay, this is the hello sign, this is the, this is the face of somebody, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, already presupposes that these tokens have a meaning. So if we are looking at how to make experiences that, are, um, that can admit nuance, something that I think uh, Philip mentioned in his, in his talk, this idea of nuance, this idea of the, the clinamin, the clinamin, the swerve. In fact, the infinitesimal de uh, deviation from the line that makes the difference. It's a, it is, I agree, it's a beautiful concept. Michel Serre wrote about this, right? So the thing is this, if there's no minimum, really, okay, in, in my experience, I'm not a quantum mechanical person, quantum mechanics persists, but in my lived experience, in our lived experiences, arbitrarily small nuance of tone of voice can have arbitrarily large unbounded effect. So, that means that this idea of a token itself is very problematic. And finally, this idea of the very fact that a sign is interpretable, that in order to recognize an object, whether it's a piece of video or, or some data coming from an accelerometer, that we can, we need, in order to understand what it means, we only need to look at it. This is called the context problem in artificial intelligence. And what Heidegger taught us, is we showed us, is that there's no limit, there's no finite context according to which we can determine what this token means. And even more subtly, people like Morris Peckham and John Dewey reminded us that the meaning of a sign is basically its response. So I'm gonna go forward to some idea about how to do playful, playful conditions, okay? So uh, the basic question is how do we make an environment which is, uh, which is actually playful by looking at not so much uh, the, 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 the actual act itself, but the conditions of, of the experience. For that, I'm going to turn this over to, to Brandon, who can show us a little bit about the state engine. Yeah, so um, one of the things we've been working on in synthesis, and uh, this kind of goes back to the ozone system, tea garden system um, from Topological Media Lab, is if we have a bunch of different media instruments that are all working together in the same space, uh, competing for each other's attention and maybe creating emergent behaviors through interacting with the space and sensing through it, um, how can we get past kind of a solipsistic design where each individual instrument is composed individually and just put together and maybe start thinking about um, how all these different uh, media instruments can be combined together into one system. So um, being able to take all of your different media instruments and hook them up um, through networking them into kind of an individual framework and then having some sort of state evolution that can kind of guide uh, the potentials of what these different instruments are able to do. Um, so it could be light instruments, sound instruments, video, audio, or you know, phys physically actuated instruments. Um, so one of the things we've been working on for the past two or three years now um, has been the SC system, which is a software framework built around Maxim SP. And the idea is to kind of abstract away all the technical details about how we're doing uh, computer vision sensing or um, understanding physical actu actuators or simulations and thinking about it more of composing at the level of metaphor. So instead of thinking about, you know, like background subtraction and, um, you know, optical flow, thinking about large scale, you know, just uh, higher abstraction terms like flow or presence or texture. Um, so as part of that, we've been designing, it's a uh, state engine that allows for um, the evolution of all these instruments to be put together. And I'll give a quick demonstration here. Okay. Um, let's see. Um, so the basic idea is that as a, um, a media composer, or as a group of people composing for an environment, you can define these individual states that um, you can move through. And that uh, depending on um, 
what you open up to each individual instrument, um, these different states can kind of uh, guide what those instruments are capable of doing, and you can move around in these. Um, and then there's also internal dynamics. So. You can start moving through these more complex topologies you can build and you can imagine these could be something more complex or they could be you know more metaphorical than this demo here where it's um, you know an instrument uh, instrument moving between different seasons or um, maybe different emotional states too uh, yeah so in this example let's see here I can enable it so this is just a really simple example we set up where we're looking at activity in three bands um, of video. So as people move across the space, the engine um, can start to evolve uh, according to where people are in the space. So you can imagine this could also be um, sensor data from you know live microphone input or video input or um, you know controllers, all sorts of things. Or it could be also output from other media instruments. So it's a way of kind of combining all these together into um, kind of a single state engine that can uh, help guide them. And I'll get back to you. So the, the final part is that we like to open the door to people who might want to learn how to compose these things. So we're going to try to set up some workshops in, uh, in England um, and also in Montreal. So uh, we invite people to come and be on the lookout for that kind of thing. Thank you very much. Questions? Uh, thank you. Um, I like the fact that it's, uh, it's live and interactive. I just wonder with the, um, I didn't really understand the, 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 the installation, not this one or this one or the one before. What is actually happening? I mean, what can yes, this one. This one. What can I? Yeah, for example, what can I do as um as an inhabitant of that space? And how is the how are the visuals, you know, interactive? What can I influence? And can I communicate with my colleagues? And is there an audio uh, system as well? Yeah. So the idea would be that um, if we have a bunch of different media instruments in a space um, that are all kind of you know, working together as an ecology instead of individual media instruments, could people define certain states of their systems where within those states, they can kind of evolve naturally according to how they would normally. But then um, this system, if I go back here, um, can be used to kind of guide what behaviors they have. So if you have a state of your system, so you have like a, a you know, video projection or something, and there's a calm state or excited state, then as people are um, what you can do is you can map certain activities in the space to guide people towards uh, those states of your instrument. So it's kind of the state of the entire environment, and then the individual um, media instruments are responding to that. So, so when I'm this one person, and, and is it reflected that I'm closer to the other person or further away? Or what is actually, and what do I see? What's the image? Uh, how does the image, I mean, very concretely, I just want to understand. Yeah, understand. Yeah, yeah. So this is like the the system and the structure behind and all the, the software parts, but what is it then? What do I experience? Right, yeah. CM1. Uh, this is the CM1. Uh, um, this is an official weather model that people use in National Center for Atmospheric Research. Usually it's done offline, not in real time, but it's credit to Brandon. He was able to make it run in real time. Everything we do is real time, meaning it has to work like medium. So that's like water, like plash, splashing our hands in water. No matter how complicated it is underneath the simulations running, we're trying to make new kinds of matter that have a tangibility to it. They can manipulate as if we manipulate clay or smoke. That's what it is on the floor. Uh, now, be, to be very clear, it doesn't have to look like this at all. We can make it animate physical objects or sound or what have you. Okay, it's decoupled. And the states that Ben is talking about are metaphorical states. The non-states of the actual, the states of the potential. Okay. Thank you.